Welcome students of class 8. Today we will do part 2 of unit 6 of your textbook Honeydew. The lesson this is Jodi's fawn. In this part we will do some of the exercise that is given in your textbook under working with language and then read the poem the duck and the kangaroo. Let's go to the section working with language on page 94. Look at these pairs of sentences that are given there. Penny said to Jody, will you be back before dinner? Look at the next sentence. Penny asked Jody if he would be back before dinner. Look at the next set. How are you feeling, Pa? asked Jody. Jody asked his father how he was feeling. Can you make out the difference between these two sets of sentences? Let us take the first set first. Penny said to Jody, Will you be back before dinner? Penny asked Jody if he would be back before dinner. What is the difference between the two? In the first sentence, you have recorded what exactly Penny told Jody. In the second sentence, we are only reporting what was said by Penny. I'm sure you've heard of this before. The first one is said to be in direct speech. The second one is in reported speech or indirect speech. The same thing happens in the second set too. Now let's point out what the differences are in terms of the sentence structure. Okay, just look at it. Uh, in the first sentence, you have will you be back before dinner? Now the will you becomes he would in the second sentence. Also said becomes asked and there is an if that is added. Now look at the next set, the second set. Are you becomes he was. Again, pa becomes his father. Also, where there is a said, that becomes asked in the reported speech when there is a question. Right? Now, these are the rules of transforming direct speech into indirect speech. So, what really happens? The present tense form in the first sentence becomes past tense in the second. The direct address in the first becomes an indirect one in the second sentence. And the word said becomes asked when there is a question. Also, the word if is added in some contexts like it is done in the first one. Now let's try the sentences on page 95 using the same rule. Number 1. Penny said, do you really want it son? What do you think will be the answer? Penny asked his son if he really wanted it. Right. Number 2. Millwheel said, will he write back with me? The answer, Millwheel asked if he would write back with him. Number 3. He said to Millwheel, do you think the phone is still there? The answer, he asked Millwheel if he thought the 
phone was still there. Okay. Will you try the next two sentences as homework later? Okay. Let's now try question number two. Just look at the sentences that are given there. He tumbled backward. It turned its head. Can you find the difference between these two sentences? Let's ask a question to the verb in the second sentence. It turned its head. So let's ask a question. Turned what? If you ask that question, you get the answer in the sentence. Turned its head. Turned is the verb in the sentence. Its head, which is the answer to the question, turned what? Is the object of the verb. So, this sentence which has a verb that has an object. This kind of a verb is called a transitive verb. What is a transitive verb? Once again, a verb that has an object meaning an object that receives the action of the verb. Right? So, all these verbs which has an object is called the transitive verb. Now, let us look at the first sentence. He tumbled backward. If you ask the question, tumbled what? Do we get an answer? There is the word backward, but it does not give us the answer tumbled what? Right? So, this verb does not have an object. Right? What does the verb have? Backward. If it is not an object, what is it? It is an adverb. It, it tells us where. It, if you ask the question tumbled where, you get an answer tumbled backward. It tells us something more about the verb and therefore or the place where the verb happens. Therefore, it is an adverb and not a and not an object. This kind of a verb which does not have an object is called an intransitive verb. Okay? Right. Now, let us look at these sentences that are given to us. We will have to find out which of those verbs are transitive and which are intransitive. Shall we give it a try? Good. Look at the sentences. Sentence number one. Jodi then went to the kitchen. Transitive or intransitive? Ask the question what to the verb went. Do you get an answer? Yes, to the kitchen, but it tells us where, went where, not went what, right? So, it is an intransitive verb. Good. The next one, the phone wobbled after him. Again, ask the question, wobbled what? No answer. So, again, intransitive verb, right? The third one, you found him. Ask the question, what to the verb found? Found what? Found him. Right. So, there is an object and the verb is a transitive verb. Good. The next one, he picked it up. Picked what? Picked it. Again, the verb has an object. So, it is a transitive verb. Next one, he dipped his fingers in the milk. Is it a transitive or intransitive? Dipped what? 
his fingers. Right. So, that is again a transitive verb. Let us look at the sixth one. It bleated frantically and butted him. Now, there are two verbs. Bleated frantically. Let us look at that first. Bleated what? No answer. Bleated how? Yes. So, certainly frantically is not the object and bleated is an intransitive verb. Right. Let us look at butted. Butted him. Butted what? Him. So, you have an answer. Butted is therefore a transitive verb because it has the object him. Got it? Right. Can you try the rest of them at home later? Good. Let us go to the next section. Question number 3. Look at the words that are given there. You have to arrange these words in an order in which they would appear in the dictionary. We all know that words appear in the dictionary in the alphabetical order. Right? So, you have to write these words down in the alphabetical order. Uh, so, we have words with C first and then D and so on. But with C, there are two words. Which of them will come first? Both of them with start with C L. Right? So, the first two letters are the same. If the first two letters are the same, then we should look at the third letter. What are the third letters? One has O, the other one has E. So, which of these will come first? Certainly, the one which has C L E. So, clearing first, then close. Certainly, after that, there would be the word with D, draw and then you will try the rest later. We have to do one more task with these words. With the help of the dictionary, you will have to find some phrasal verbs made with the help of these words. Can we try a few? Yes. The first one, close. Can we think of a phrasal verb? We have learnt what phrasal verbs are earlier. Yes, close up, close down, close in. You can look up the meanings in the dictionary and make sentences of your own with them later. Can we try also with the word draw? We have one in the text. Can you recollect that? Yes, draw out. We can have many more phrasal verbs with the word draw. Try them out later. Let us try one more. Make. Yes, make up is one. Try the rest later. You can work with the rest of the words and the phrasal verbs and idioms. You can take the help of the dictionary. Good. Let us now go to the next section, speaking. Question number one. Do you think it is right to kill an animal to save a human life? Give reasons for your answer. Now, I want you to think about this on your own. We have already discussed the story and some part of the answer is there in the story. Right? Yes, it was necessary to kill the doe to save Penny. But Jody had a wonderful idea of paying back for that life that was taken. And that was in the way of taking care of the fawn. Sometimes it is needed that we take help from different aspects of nature plants or animals for our own life and help. But it is 
also needed for us to know what is our responsibility in return. If we take something from nature, we must also give back to nature something. Right? So, Jodi gave us a good answer to this question. Think of what you would do if you were in this kind of a situation. You can talk to your friends later about it and exchange your ideas. Okay? Let's go to the next question. Imagine you wake up one morning and find a tiny animal on your doorstep. You want to keep it as a pet, but your parents are not too happy about it. How would you persuade them to let you keep it? Discuss it with your friends. Yes, sometimes we are faced with these kinds of dilemma. You want something, but your parents think you are still not ready to have it. So, now you have to find out your own arguments to persuade your parents. Think of how you would convince them. You can even discuss with your friends later and find out the most convincing reasons for having a bet. Do it at home later. Okay? Let's go to the next section. The section writing on page 96. Imagine you have a new pet that keeps you busy. Write a paragraph describing your pet, the things it does and the way it makes you feel. Here are a few words and phrases that you could use. Look at these words. Frisky, smart, disobedient, loyal, happy, enthusiastic, companion, sharing, friend and so on. Can you make up a paragraph taking some of these words and writing about how you spend your time taking care of your pet? Try that later at home. Next question. Human life is dependent on nature. That's why we call her Mother Nature. We take everything from nature to live our lives. Do we give back anything to nature? Write down some examples of the natural resources that we use. Write a paragraph expressing your point of view regarding our relationship with nature. Yes, this is a very, very important question that each one of us must ask ourselves. We do depend on nature for our food, for our medicines, even for our very breath. We depend on the air. We depend on water for our very life. Do we only take from nature? Or do we sometimes give back something, some little thing to nature? It's time to think, think about it and write down all the things that you take from nature and maybe a few things that you do to take care of nature so that nature can take care of you better. Good. Now, we have come to the end of this section. We have a very funny poem to read. Okay? It looks that the whole unit is all about animals and nature. So we have two more animals in our next poem. The main characters of the poem are a duck and a kangaroo. Let's read the poem and enjoy it. Next. Okay? The Duck and the Kangaroo by Edward Lear Said the duck to the kangaroo, Good gracious! How you hop over the fields and the water too, as if you never could stop. My life is a bore in this nasty pond, and I long to go out in the world beyond. I wish I could hop like you, said the duck to the kangaroo. Please give me a ride on your back, said the duck to the kangaroo. I would sit quite still and say nothing but quack. The whole of the long day through 
and we would go to the D and the Jelly Bolly over the land and over the sea. Please take me on a ride. Oh, do, said the duck to the kangaroo. Said the kangaroo to the duck, this requires a little reflection. Perhaps on the whole it might bring me luck. And there seems but one objection, which is, if you will let me speak so bold, your feet are unpleasantly wet and cold and would probably give me the room, Artis, said the kangaroo. Said the duck, as I sat on the rocks, I have thought over that completely and I bought four pairs of worsted socks which fit my web feet neatly. And to keep out the cold, I have bought a cloak and every day a cigar I'll smoke and to follow my own dear true love of a kangaroo, said the kangaroo. I'm ready and in the moonlight pale, but to balance me well, dear duck, sit steady and quite at the end of my tail. So away they went with a hop and a bound and they hopped the whole world three times round. And who's so happy, oh who, as the duck and the kangaroo? Okay, so do you like the poem? Yes, it's a funny poem, a nice one. Now let's look at some of the activities that are suggested in the book after the poem. Look at the section working with the poem on page 99. Taking words that come at the end of lines, write five pairs of rhyming words. Read each pair aloud. Here is an example given to you, pond and beyond. Can you locate the rest of the rhyming words? Yes, there are plenty. Let us look at some more of them. You rhymes with kangaroo. Back rhymes with quack, bold rhymes with cold, rocks rhyme with socks, cloak rhymes with smoke, true rhymes again with kangaroo, bound rhymes with round. Right. Look at question number two. Complete the dialogue. Duck, dear kangaroo, why don't you, we can write the rest, take me on a ride with you. Yes, kangaroo, with pleasure my dear duck, though I do not really like your wet and cold feet. Right, duck, that won't be a problem, I will try and complete that. Yes, wear woolen socks, a cloak and smoke of cigar to keep myself warm. Right. Let's go to question number three. The kangaroo does not want to catch rheumatism. Spot this word in stanza three. Say why it is spelt differently. Why is it in two parts? Why does the second part begin with a capital letter? Okay. Look at the last but one line of the third stanza. You have the word ru at the end of a line and matis, ru matis. Probably that is the word where the kangaroo meant rheumatism. Right. Now, why do you think the poet has broken the word and changed its spelling? He has broken the word into two parts and written only ru so that it rhymes with kangaroo in the next line and he has made it matis at the beginning of the next line. Now why is matis M capital? Very simple. Every line of a poem always begins with a capital letter. That is the reason M is capital in Matis. Is that fine? Good. Let's go to the next question. Do you find the poem humorous? Yes, the poem is humorous. 
there are quite a few lines which make the poem extremely funny. Try and underline those lines later. We have one last short poem. Shall we read that? Yes. A February Surprise by Ralph Marcelino. The trees are still asleep today and do not seem to know. A storm came by last night and heaped their branches full of snow. See how they start up with surprise as one by one they awake. Why gracious me, they seem to say and give themselves a shake. Yes, another lovely little nature poem. Can you imagine the scene where there is a snowstorm and the leaves are all covered and transfixed. They cannot actually move the leaves and the branches. But as the day proceeds with a little bit of the sun, some part of the snow actually melting and with the breeze when the leaves and the branches move they look as if they are giving themselves a shake to move out the snow that is still settled on them. Lovely little poem takes us back again to another aspect of nature. Okay, with this we come to the end of unit 6. So, what all have we learnt in this unit? We have read the story, this is Jodi's fawn. We have answered some of the comprehension questions that are there in your textbook. We have also worked with language connected to the story and then we read the funny poem, the duck and the kangaroo. Also did the exercises that are there in your textbook after the poem. Finally, we have read the small poem of February surprise. With this, we come to the end of this session on unit 6. See you next time when we do some more activities on unit 6 later. Thank you. Goodbye.